All right, everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Here is another hot rod shop. I'm here with Caleb once again. Caleb, super excited. Yeah. Gearhead Next Door Garage. Yep. They have been on the channel before. They had awesome. Ken had the Ford truck, the COE, mm -hmm. at the F100 Grand National. So I'll put a link so you can have a look. So I know that Ken makes some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, we do, <laughs> we do a little bit of everything, so. A little bit of everything, but... Uh, but I want to go check out the shop, see some of the projects that you've guys got here. Yeah. Now, Ken is your dad. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've obviously just walked in. He's not here, but I'm happy that Caleb is. Let's go check out the shop. Perfect. All right, this is a big shop. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, what is it? I think it's 20,000 square foot, something like that. 20,000 square foot, and yeah. there is a lot of cars here. There's a lot of projects. Yes. Yes, and it's, it's literally packed full 24-7 because this is... This doubles as our shop for the um, for the class car liquidator shop for all the, our little stuff there, and the left side is mostly our class car liquidator stuff and like small customer stuff, you know, little small projects stuff like that. And then every once in a while, I'll have somebody put their car in here just to be here overnight. But if I Fair enough. Were coming, I would have had it a little more cleaned up, but. Our guys That's work, all right, our you guys know. Half days on Fridays, so Friday afternoons. We, it's we, we don't need you here. to clean it up. We, I, I have to walk in just as it is, you know, just so everybody knows yep. what the norm is. And this is still pretty cool. There's a lot happening here. Classic car liquidators. What Caleb is talking about is classic cars for sale. Um, so there is a video on that. Do check it out. I'll also put a link so you can have a look. But they do have a restoration shop, a service shop to look mm -hmm. over cars. But not only that, this is also Gearhead garage next door yeah gearhead next door garage gearhead yeah. next door garage <laughs> thank you yes ma'am so this is full frame of restorations that take part here everything we don't we don't just do just do the big stuff we do everything so i mean that we have people come in that they'll have a car that somebody you know built for them that yeah. was finished that said hey i have this thing and they built it and i'm having all these little issues we'll go through and fix other people's work that happens way more often than i'd like yeah um, but we do frame off restorations we do ac installs we do everything nice. from big to small i mean you know. nice and we're in Sharman, texas everybody yep. now i'm seeing right a godzilla motor here what are we building so this this truck will be at sema this year this is the f1 million and actually if you show the interior i don't know when this is coming out but the interior is not being unveiled until sema okay um sculpt garage down in san marcus did the interior but unfortunately everything else we kind of showed off already so but the interior we're kind of keeping secret because he spent a lot of money on it okay so we're <laughs> not going to show fully, the interior it's all fully 3d printed it's it's nuts it is nuts in there I would like to check but, it out. I do plan oh, to go to see I'll, I'll definitely show you. We're just not posting <laughs> on social media yet, but uh, I get to have a sneak peek. Yeah, but this is a this is a 7.3 liter Godzilla. Um, it's built fully built internals. Um, it's got a, a polished Whipple supercharger. It's gonna make around 900 to 1,000. It, it should be capable of 1,000. I'm gonna I want to turn it down a little bit. I'd like it to be around 800, but he wants to say he makes 1,000 horsepower. So. Fair enough. Make a thousand horsepower, right? Now there isn't that many 7.3 liter Godzillas out there right now. Yeah, it's kind of a newer motor. It's okay. the new, uh, it's the new Ford F250 pushrod motor that they came out to be their new gasser motor. And the cool thing is, it's they came out with a new pushrod V8 in 2024, like you know, <laughs> 2023. I mean, we were all pretty excited when it came out. It's kind of a cool design. Um, the only painful part is some of the oil pan. How the oil pan set out is for a truck and making it work in a hot rod application takes a lot of conversion. That's why we use Indy Power products. They make a whole oil pan conversion that moves it to a rear sump. Okay. So that it can fit in hot rods and stuff with it's not, you know, four-wheel drive giant truck. So. so so what car is this? This is a 56 Ford F100. 56 F100, okay. I have, well, I guess I don't have a rendering. I have the rendering was actually on that thing we did the interview by earlier. Okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, this will this will be at SEMA this year. Uh, yeah, and was this a restoration or was this a ground up build? Oh, this is ground up everything. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is, we it call it the F1 million. That's the joke that he's going to have close to a million dollars in finishing it. <laughs> so The uh, F1 million. I'll have to keep an eye out for yeah, that, honestly. Which is funny. We came out, we came up with that name and then like, we came up with that a year and a half ago or so. And we actually have custom emblems for it. I'll see if I can find them and show you. But uh, they, uh, that after we came out with that name about three or four months ago, Post Malone came out with his new album, F1 Trillion. And now it sounds like we got the idea from him. 
but we did well, not. Well, no, you should be calling have, him proof. and yeah. <laughs> getting some loyalties, right? Yeah, but this this one's probably our biggest build, uh, full no limit chassis. Uh, it's got hydro shocks and hydraulic adjustable suspension. Um, it's actually a lot closer than it looks. We're just a few things we're waiting on the headers getting coated, and we have to make a bed floor for it. This is just. It's going to be really close. Uh, it's really close to being done, but it's going to be a... Uh, well, I hope so. SEMA is only weeks away. Oh, yeah. That's no big deal. <laughs> That's normal. Normal for a SEMA build. All yeah. right. What do you got going on here? This is ironically here? a car that we built about five years ago. Okay. Uh, 68 Cornet RT. That um, It was an RT convertible that a friend of ours was starting to restore, and he just didn't really want to finish it, so he took it on trade for something else he was looking at, a finished car. So um, he finished payment for us because he, he had it all primed. He's actually a local paint body guy. And uh, so he kind of delivered it to us as a shell painted. Mm -hmm. And we built this for my dad. Okay. Um, so this was, he, he, this was gonna, he wanted a convertible cruiser, but he always, he falls in love with something. And then he falls in love with something else. And then he falls <laughs> in love with something else. So half of his stuff doesn't last longer than six months. So. so what's some of the work that you guys have done on this? So this thing, I mean, like I said, it was a complete shell. There was okay. no wiring, there was no engine, there was no transmission, there was uh -huh. no rear end, no brakes. You did all that. We did everything. And actually, uh, Tony, the guy who owns the C700, he owns yep. this now. Okay. So this car came up back for sale. He knew about the car. And he's like, I've always wanted that car. It came back up for sale. He saw it. He bought it. Tony's a very interesting man. You'll see in that video interview from the F100 show, not only did he have this massive COE, very custom, but okay. he needed the bed That's to be... That's actually his, his car, oh. too. The F1 million yeah. <laughs> is going to be Tony's as well. Yep. And he wanted to have the COE with the bed where he can put a golf cart yeah. on it. He, he decided not to do that. We custom, we finished the bed out and everything, <laughs> but he has a custom trailer that's paint matched with a custom that's paint right. matched golf cart. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I got told. He was making a custom trailer. Yep. So big, big car guy. And now he's got a convertible cruiser as well. Yeah. What are you doing to the Corvette? So this one's a full frame off everything build, but it's not, it's not even close to a stock build. Um, this is kind of built to be a race car. Um, it's got a speed, uh, speed tech chassis, their full chassis that's set up uh, similar to the CUDA suspension that I, that I showed you earlier. It's set up for full 30, 30 degrees turning radius with 315s. It's far from finished. We literally just barely set the, set the body on the chassis and did some of the cutting. Now you've got rack and pinion in there yeah, as yep, well. Yep, it's a sweet manufacturing racing rack and pinion. So this will be a road course car. This is a Mass Motorsports 427 cubic inch LST. So it's an LT converted to act like an LS. Okay. So it's got a LT2 Corvette C8 style intake with a Bungs epoxy welded on. So it works like, it gets rid of the direct injection. Works almost like an LS. Makes a ton of power. I think it dynoed at 680 NA. So with uh, with with no boost, 680 NA is a pretty big feat. <laughs> oh yeah. But um, it's got a it's got an IRS cantilever IRS. Um, it's gonna it's gonna have a wide body. It's literally we just set it on. We had some roller wheels, just forge lines, but they're just extra extra forge lines we had in stock. But uh, the it's gonna be pretty cool. I'll send you the rendering for it if you want to overlay it. But okay. we have a, it's gonna be a BMW Isle of Man green metallic a really cool color it's got a lot of a lot of flop it's a cool color um, so this getting, is literally right at the, begin, at the beginning right at the beginning yeah. right at the beginning okay right at the beginning yeah it's getting you know full carbon fiber so how, you know, bumpers, how bumperettes everything this is insane so how long would something like this take you guys um so this one it's kind of been in line waiting because mm -hmm. the motor had a bunch of delays they had parts delays and then they had just just it was like the series of unfortunate events that of passed. course it took like, we were supposed to start this six months ago. We didn't have the motor and we were just sitting there waiting. So, I can relate and I understand that, okay? <laughs> when it finally showed up, we started thrashing on it. So this one we started on a month ago, maybe, mm -hmm. is when we first brought it back into the shop. It's, it's probably only gonna take us about a, probably about nine months. That's not bad, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're talking I mean, a full body makeover here as well, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, we've already, on a game of the month, we've had it almost, all, most of the wiring's laid. We've done all the cutting for the floors. The big part's going to be doing the wide body. Okay. Uh, we already have all the wide body stuff, but doing the wide body conversion, um, getting rid of, uh, we're doing a whole conversion to make it uh, the later model um, hood. So it doesn't have the wiper door that comes up like the 68 wood factory. Yeah. Uh, we're even doing away with this. It's getting a Targa top. It's getting a one piece top. 
Okay. One piece carbon fiber target top. It's going to go there. Uh, we're doing a bunch of trick stuff. We're closing out. You can see the cantilever suspension back here is going to be exposed oh, to the nice. driver, but with some plexiglass, we're building out a custom surround here. Um, we're going to have some hidden speakers and stuff and all that. We're going to use some of this for some of our, you know, see our fuses, our wiring. Some of it's going to be hidden back here with access panels. Then we're going to build a plexiglass thing so you can, you can see the suspension working while you're driving it. Nice. Um, and then we got a you know, fully built tick performance racing six speed transmission. I mean, built to the nines, billet front plate, everything. Um, the, I mean, the rear end's built to handle like 1300 horsepower. So it's a little way overbuilt everything. 14 inch bare brakes. Uh, we're doing a custom duckbill spoiler here. Um, shaving, you know, I mean, we're shaving the side markers. Man, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just picturing it, you know. Take a look at the rendering, everybody, because this is going to look pretty sleek. Oh, the rendering is incredible. We're And like I said, we're doing carbon fiber bumperettes on the front. The hood is fully carbon fiber, and we're going to do, um, it has like a inlet in the, in the, in the center. We're going to leave that exposed carbon, so it's going to be kind of cool, but it's just like a little area right here in the center. And then the, in the back, where the exhaust normally comes out, we had uh, Josh at Custom Image Corvettes, makes a custom diffuser that goes in where the exhaust normally goes. Uh -huh. And so it'll be a carbon fiber little diffuser that goes here and the exhaust will come out through the center like a new C8 Z06. Okay. So I have the, the quad exhaust in the center off of a new C8 Z06. Originally, this was going to be painted to match his C8. Okay. But then he fell in love with that green. So, <laughs> you know what? Green yeah. is happening. Yes. Green yes, is happening is. these days. It is. Now you've got a Bronco. You know, these days, every time I go to a shop, there's always a Bronco around. Yeah. It becomes they, so popular. The funny part is this is the mild. This is the little baby Bronco. Um, so this is actually my stepmom's. Okay. Um, he bought this with the paint body finished on it and the interior done at a auction. And it had a motor in it. It had a transmission in it. It had hardly any brakes. It was wow. put together for an auction. Literally. Wow. The brakes hardly worked. Like you couldn't even drive it off the lot. It was an old worn out 302 that like smoked like a freight train. It was just done pretty paint and body. So since then we actually had a new 302 that we put in it. Um, I think it's like 400 horse uh, blueprint. I don't know if he has all this hooked up yet. Must not, must not have the hood hinges. Uh, Fair enough. Hood release done, but it's got a new 302. It's a blueprint 302 AOD. Uh, we had to put disc brakes all around, had drum brakes all around, and they hardly worked. It was awful. Um, but so, she really wanted a Bronco. She did. She has a okay. new one. That's her daily driver, two-door new Bronco. And she joked about wanting an old one. And it's her 20th wedding anniversary. That's actually why he's not here. He's on vacation with her for their oh, anniversary nice. right nice. Well, happy anniversary, yeah. Ken, and to yeah. your missus as well. <laughs> so that's and why. thanks for allowing me in your shop. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's why this thing is here is because he kind of got it for her. All right, talk to me about the chassis here. So this one, you wouldn't even know what you're looking at because it's, you know, it's an LS, but then it's four-wheel drive, and it's actually a Jeep. Okay. So this is a CJ8 Scrambler, you know, the, the long ones that have the truck bed on the back. Like my rental today? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> so it's a CJ8 Scrambler 80-something model. Okay. But um, it's actually waiting for paint body. That's why there's extra parts and stuff stacked up next to it. They're doing, I think they're painting the, painting the tub so we can get it on here. Um, but this guy, he had this, he had the CGA that he had, it's another one where I said people had been to other shops, mm -hmm. had some work done and it was very partial, very bad. He brought it to us. It was a basket case with like a Vortec 350 that had, um, I don't remember, I mean, it was just a, it was a whole mess. It, mm -hmm. it drove awful and it was like wiring nightmare. It was like homemade patches to the original wiring and stuff. So he wanted to do all new wiring. He's like, I want to LS. I want, you know, the, the twin stick, full drive different. He's like, I want everything just, I want it all new. So he's Fair like, enough. this is my baby. This is my high school car. I want it <laughs> just going all out. She's like, I don't want to spare anything. So, so we, we took his chassis. We kind of redid it. We did it, you know, economically, it's just four wheel drive. We're going to, you know, paint it nice. So we did, um, um, undercoated the chassis and stuff and rebuilt the rear end, front end, brakes, uh, put the LS in here. Now we're just waiting for the tub to start the wiring process. Okay. Now let's move around over here. So this Bronco is the crazy one, actually, <laughs> is what I, what I was going to say. Is uh, this one is for a customer that's an all-out build. Uh, it's a full Kinsler chassis. It's got a five-liter Coyote. It's got okay. a ten-speed automatic. 
It's got um, it's got the adaptive. This is uh, this is the six figure Broncos yes. that we have seen. Yep, it's got the adaptive, uh, the tractive adaptive suspension. You know, we have different modes, Kenser chassis, um, four wheel disc brakes. You know, everything is just pretty much set up. And this is the color it's going to be. They wanted to they wanted to do like a bed liner on everything underneath. Easy maintenance. He is going to daily drive this thing. Nice. Literally. With the Coyote yeah. motor, he's going to be very happy with that. Well, it's an interesting story, you know, how you talked about in our in the other video with Classic Car Liquidators and Garrett Next Door. This guy came to buy a Bronco from me. Okay. And he test drove it. And uh, this was back when I was helping with sales. And he test drove it. He said, Kale, this is the seventh Bronco I've test drove. He's like, and I've hated every one of them. <laughs> and he's like, but I want one. He just, he's like, he's, he's tried to, he was trying to search in the 70 to $100,000 range. There's a bunch of tons of Broncos out there in that range that are fairly stock chassis. Mm -hmm. Maybe they got fuel injection or overdrive, a couple little add-ons, AC, but he just didn't like how any of them drove. So it snowballed from him coming to buy a, I think it was a $75,000, 73 Bronco we had yep. to building this yeah so we talked about it got a budget he's spending i think around a little over 200 i think they're starting off right around right like 180 190 and then he added some things they're doing some custom consoles things like that but um he added a button and then he added a sound system you know, you know how it kind of snowballs but. you know it seems like a lot of money but that is the market right now for the broncos yes we went to and it's on the channel to velocity restorations and and all the Broncos, they also have got the 5.0 Coyote motor in it. Yep. And when you do that, custom interiors, leather interiors, these Broncos are always getting close to 200,000, if not more. I mean, it, it, it's just... And as long as there's people paying for it, that's how much it's going to cost. Because well, I like the Broncos honestly, too. It's the, the work that it takes to get them there. You it's know? the work, okay. It's the work that it takes to get them there. This is, I mean, it's... It's just the parts and labor that it takes to get them there is going to be It's not the it. fact that it is a Bronco, that's what the, the price Broncos is. The Broncos what makes the base of them high. That's yeah. what I thought. Like and then when they're special, that, that's what makes more people willing to do it because they do hold their value. Yes, they hold their value so, without a doubt. That's, that's the nice part is that you get up there and they start, they hold their value there. So less people are less scared to build these because yep. they see that there is a market reveal. They just want one finished. Because you, you see the classic ones for 60, 70. One. Exactly. Actually, I think Velocity is the original um, idea for this one was one that they built. Okay. It was a similar color to this. It was slightly different. The Tiffany, yep. And it has a little white stripe on it that he liked. There's, and he's like, I want this, but I don't want this. Like, yep. It was kind of cool because they have such a good site and that's what they do, but they're yes. kind of backed up. So that's why he's like, I like what these guys did, yes. but can you do it for me and change these few little things? Yes. So. And hopefully do it cheaper as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like he did some <laughs> things like he, he's making us, he doesn't want this to fold. Yep. We're doing a full custom center console. We're doing full custom gauges for him. Like the gauge cluster, he didn't like, um, oh dang, it's not in right now, but uh, we have a whole custom dash for it. Nice. He didn't like how the speedometer's to the left of the steering right here and where all the AC vents came out. So he's he's literally like, give me a flat sheet and mm -hmm. I'll sort of show you where I want stuff. And now our fab guy's making it. Okay, where, so, where do they make this stuff? The fab's back there. I'll show you here in just a second. Okay. But uh, we well, have three fab guys. Let's walk there and also tell me a little bit about Ken, your dad. Now, he's not here. He obviously knows his stuff and his skills up there. And we know that he loves racing from our Classic Car Liquidators video. Yes. Where is, does his background from building come? So his background, honestly, isn't in building. It's in liking cars. Okay. And buying and selling cars and stuff like that. His, okay. his, really, his background really isn't in building. It's just that we built our own stuff and enjoyed it. Okay. And whenever people started, we realized the need, especially in this area, for somebody reasonable to do all this stuff. Yeah. That that's why we started. We started building cars here before we told anybody we were building cars because people came to ask us. Yeah. There's a couple guys. There's two brothers. They had a '67 and '68 Camaro. They're like, we really need somebody to build this for us locally. Yeah. We want you to build it. And they're like, we have. They have. They have the budget. You know, they have the money to do it. And we're like. We've never done this. Like we just buy and sell cars and fix yeah. up our own stuff. You know, it's a little. But just being it's, around cars and working on it. That, to, and then he started hiring fabricators and builders. Yep. Okay. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, we're all hot rodders. We've all built our own stuff. Like we yep. built. Me and him have built a couple fifty six F one hundreds. He's built a um, seventy one Cuda supercharged Cuda. I built. We built a seventy three Scant for me in college. And, okay. But we did our own stuff, and then when he took this place over, we kind of started stepping it up. 
a little bit. So. And um, how many people do you have working here? Um, total, I think it's 23. 23, okay. Um, in the back. Well, uh, the shop is closed, everybody. That's yeah. me coming at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, they they uh, they work an extra hour throughout the week so they can have a half day on Friday. So okay. and they love that. But um, now yeah, this is, this talk is the to me. This is the fabrication corner. That's kind of I mean because it's fabricators, it's messy. Uh, <laughs> I, I like see. it because there's a lot happening. Yeah, this is a this is actually a chassis for a '53 that's in our paint shop. I'll try to take you to our paint shop here in a minute show you the 53 we're building it's actually one of tony's um it's one of tony's trucks he worked on with a buddy for a while and they had all these issues and we fixed it and ended up changing the chassis out it's going to be a really nice truck when it's done but they're just having to do a little i don't know i think they're doing exhaust on it they're building exhaust okay. for it but it's a now ITV. this is the body shop paint happens here what about interior no interior yeah okay. we, that's all that's the one thing we don't do is interior we pretty much sub that out. We have a few local guys, and for high-end stuff, we have other shops we go to for that. Okay. But we, I don't know what our trailer's here for, but apparently we had some issue with the trailer. And uh, this is a working shop. We are going 24-7. We have like six trailers. And anytime something's wrong, they fix it up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's that's the fab corner there. We have all, all the different machinery and stuff like that. We have a plasma table somewhere. Uh, we have, it's, it's a mess. I mean, our guys are... We have two full-time fab guys and one part-time that works about 70% of the time. But, okay. Uh, he, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but it's, you've got a paint booth as well. Yeah, yeah. Our paint body shop was the building we passed earlier. I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, it's in a different building. Yeah. Well, this I'm is, not surprised because there's so many cars here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a CUDA we're building. It's going to be similar to the other one. It's going to have a Hellcat, Hellcat motor. It's going to be a Porsche, Porsche green. It's kind of a flat green you know, that, that we're doing. It's going to have big wheels and tires. It's got part of the subframe in there, but it's, uh, we got to the point and stopped on it because we had some <laughs> we had other priorities. But hopefully after SEMA, we're going to start thrashing on this thing and it'll be back. It'll be on the scene next year. Nice. So, and that is Tony's other COE he was telling you about. Okay. So this one's a project after we get the 56 done, he wants to build this to tow it. Okay, so it has Th that's, I think that's what I got told at the show, Yes. that there is another truck being built as well. And it's funny, one of our fabricators is actually Tony's son. Okay. <laughs> who's, uh, he is probably, he's one of our best fabricators. He's super talented, but he's the one who's going to do this. I think nice. that's actually part of the dash for the Bronco sitting there, ironically. But, uh, but yeah, this one, it's got a cool Art Deco bed. We bought it just like this. There's some awful metal work on it we're going to have to redo and stuff but it's uh it's got a cummins motor um in the back we're still trying to figure out if we're going to do a full back seat or how we're going to make access for that but it's a work is, uh, in progress and i think tony would be quite surprised hopefully yeah <laughs> pleasantly surprised to see me here in the shop yeah yeah after um we met at the f100 grand nationals and the fact that gearhead garage is right here that's super cool and so this is a weird one because this was this guy's show truck in the 80s and 90s and I think in like 2001, it got put in a storage facility and it sat there until very, not very long ago. It's even got the like marbled paint. You can see that uh, we kind of tried to restore and polish out, but it's got the marbled paint job where you can see all the crazy different little effects. And it's crazy looking in the sun. I mean, it had like billet everything, billet grill. I mean, the control arms were polished. So we've sent a bunch of the control arms out for re-chroming. We had to read, I mean, his wiring was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> um, there was, there were rats living in it. I mean, Steven, he, he did, he shaved the window on the side. He had a little, the little sunroof, rolling sunroof. And I mean, it's, it's on air ride and just goes, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. It's totally nineties. What, what is it? What kind of? It's a suburban. Oh, it's a suburban. Okay. Yeah. And he wants to do it back just like it's old glory. Like he wants it to be and So we've been working on it. We got the new motor motor in it freshened up i mean it's even got the big old billet steering wheel it's got the big old billet wheels and i mean he wants to do it completely old school cool like he's like i want this i want to feel like i'm in high school again and he's like i don't want to do it modern like people do it now i want to do it old school like he's good like him. he's like this is what i want so that's what we're gonna do so good for him huh? yeah <laughs> and this is our and then we have our line of cars that we're gonna do someday it's a nova race car we were gonna build a camaro we were gonna build uh, Super B with the Gen 3 Hemi we're going to build. This one we're actually going to build soon. It's a 60, 61, I think, Chrysler. Okay. 300. A local friend of ours was building it. It was his project for the last 20 years. 
and uh, he's a painter. He's one of our go-to painters, one of the best painters in our area. Nice. And uh, he even painted his little, he nicknamed it Lolita. <laughs> he had a little girl, pinup girl on the thing. That was, him and his wife named it forever ago. Wow, and, and they actually painted that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be one of our projects someday. But we just always, it, why not? This is also Tony's. Of course. Yeah, that's why it's sitting here because it had some <laughs> weird little issues, but. Yeah, it's, he's, he sees something shiny. He's like, that's cool. And then we're like, you can't drive that on the street. He's like, what? Why not? <laughs> so Why that's, not? <laughs> uh, it, there's always something new going on here. But we, uh, we deal with a lot of his stuff and his collection. I mean, he's probably got 40 cars. So we we'll okay. deal with a lot, of his, a lot of his collection and managing it. And he's full of crazy ideas. And he ended up... It's, it's good to have a client like that that will allow you to push the boundaries. Yes, but he is also one of... He slowly became one of our best friends at the same time as being one of our... Nice. One of our best clients, so... This is just this is a truck that we're getting ready to sell in the shop. It's a long bed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, long bed K20, but it, the cool thing is it's a factory Cheyenne Super with the bench seats and everything. Big block, it's a really cool truck. Probably the last gearhead car in here is our uh, Corvette. So my dad just thought he's going to race. One of our friends built this years ago. It was in Vet Magazine. And we just uh, came up for auction. And uh, Randy Johnson, DNZ Customs out of Wisconsin. If you ever have a chance to go see him, awesome guy. One guy shop, builds incredible cars. But he built this for himself forever ago and sold it when, it, when he blew the motor. And somebody else we knew bought it and put an LS7 in it and uh, drove it a little bit. Then when he put it up for auction, we bought it immediately because it's like a, it's a ready to go road course racer. I mean, it's, you know, you're going to run out fast. of room and you that probably may, have already run out of room. That may be why we're waiting on a quote for another, you know, 200 by 100 shot behind us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're expanding. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. All the time. It's, it's a constant thing. But uh, if you want, I can show you the paint shop real quick and yeah. then we can go from there. Let's go check out the paint booth. Well, this okay. Is, this is the spot where you will probably see a couple of people working. I think that a couple of people working overtime here. Uh, Mark and uh, Fallon are in there. But uh, this is our body shop. This uh, was like an actual detail shop that we had on the side of our paint booth. And we realized that it would be nice to have a place to keep all the body shop dust. <laughs> they would keep the, I mean, because getting all that stuff in the drains of the paint booth and everything is just crazy. That's actually our painter. That's his project, a second gen Camaro he's building. But uh, this is a truck that we bought to sell, but it was so cool that we we're doing it up. Uh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's got a diesel in it. It's like crazy extended cab dually thing. I was just going to say, did you guys yeah. add the... No, it, so this was like that when we got it, but it had no bed. It was like okay. it was not finished. Like it had this, but it had no bed. So we're doing a, like a quick little paint job on it. I'll show you the bed that we fabricated up because it, it just looked unfinished. It's sitting right over here. But uh, we wanted to make a bed for it. So our, we let our fab guys go crazy. They made this little Art Deco bed to kind of float with the body lines and stuff just to finish the back of the, back of the truck off. And the fuel tank's going to sit right here. But uh, we just felt like it, it deserved more because it, so, it was the start of something cool and a weird idea. Nice. And we just decided to finish it. So, well, I appreciate this because it gives us a, a chance to see the work that happens here while it's still raw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is literally uh, raw. <laughs> All right, this let's is check our, out the uh, paint. This is our paint bit. shop. Well, I think Mark and them are, but we don't bother them too much. This is the scrambler uh, tub I was telling you about earlier. Yep. And uh, this is the, I think it's a 53 Chevy, that was the chassis. Okay. Back there. That's 53 Chevy chassis. Uh, this is that Cornette convertible. This hood sitting over here. They had a uh, something hit it. They're having to repaint it. But uh, we got a whole whole mix of stuff here all the time. I think it's that's pretty more, big. And then more you've Jeep got parts we're painting. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a it's a constant evolving mess because originally, like I said, this all this stuff was just for us to do our stuff. <laughs> and then more people wanted us to do outside work, so it's we've had to like grow and expand <laughs> over time. But uh, nice. Yeah, this is actually cool yellow. I've I've seen it painted from a from like a ways away, but I've not actually seen it. 
you know, just about everything we do, we, we use uh, Vibro Solutions is who we use, but I think their company's rebranding you know, a different name soon. But this color is really cool on this 53 that uh, Super Light will show you. It's got a lot of, like an orange and a red. It's got, in the sun, it just, oh, it looks I, so I could pretty. imagine. So pretty, the cab sitting back there and everything. So it'll be cool when it's done. You know, there might be a lot of personal projects, but at the same time, this is a full hot rod shop. Yeah. From body, fab, fab to body, to now paint booth as well here. And you've, obviously you send it out for interior work. Yeah, it's hard to find uh, good interior people. We, we joked about opening an upholstery shop, but it's just people that are good enough at upholstery and have their thing figured out, have their own shops, you know, <laughs> so. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but uh, you guys are doing well and it's quite a place. Yeah, and we're, we're constantly having new stuff come on. I mean, we're just starting to open up our social media and just, just built a website, and, and we're already backed up just by word of mouth. In there this you area. go. It's just we're, we're swamped with work, and I wish Scott and Chris and all the guys would have been in here so you could have met them, but they're... Uh, well, I was yeah. not expecting a hot rod shop when I came out here yeah, looking yeah. for classic cars Like I told sale. you, we, it's all word of mouth. All yep. our work is word of mouth. It's yep. literally, it's... But uh, we're trying to trying to change that and get our name out there a little more. So that's well, the truck at SEMA will we'll do that. Help absolutely. Hopefully I'll get a chance to see it as well. But yeah. I'm going to have the details on the screen so you can give Caleb a call if you've got a project or some questions in yeah. mind. Um, and if not, give him a call if you're looking for a classic car to oh, buy yeah. or to consign. We, can, we do it all. You guys do it all. Hey, this has been super fun. Yeah, yeah. It was great to meet you and great to have you out. Absolutely. Thank you, mate. Yep.